All right, welcome back. This is House Rules uh, meeting Tuesday, December 28th at 3.40 p.m. Uh, we took a brief recess to get an updated draft of our House 2022 policy for the Chamber live streaming, recording, and archiving. Um, members have uh, the updated draft in their email and is then posted as well. Um, so we will have uh, our clerk walk through the changes. Would you like me to uh, share screen? Yes, please. Right, here we go. All righty, great. Just adjust the window here. Okay. Thank you. Um, so at the top, it would just be entitled House 22 Policy for Chamber Live Streaming, Recording, and Archiving. And then I have only highlighted within the text where we made changes or where you had requested changes. And that starts on page two in the specific procedures in section A3 in regard to the transcription. Chamber session shall be transcribed by Zoom closed captioning. And then we move down to B in regard to the newly entitled protection of live stream recordings. The new revised language would say live stream recording shall not be trimmed except that if a live stream recording contains non-legislative business and error or is otherwise required by law, parliamentary staff may request that ledge IT trim specific portions of the recording in order to remove that non-legislative business. Uh, I wonder, do we need to change that non-legislative business? Just thinking, um, well, if it would be as otherwise required by law, maybe that would actually fit as non-legislative business. Thank you for allowing me to talk that through with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Under two, Ledge IT would consult with the parliamentarian to conform, confirm authority to trim. And then after the parliamentarian consults with the House Committee on Rules, if the parliamentarian conforms a third authority, Ledge IT trims that erroneous portion. And then otherwise, no other changes to the rest of the document. Does that reflect what the committee wanted to see for changes? I'll give members just another minute to take a look and review. Do I see a question, maybe? Representative? Just a small one. And just, um, it, it says, let's see, um, section one that, that the uh, parliamentary staff goes to IT and then IT has to come back to the parliamentarian. There's a reason why that the parliamentarian staff wouldn't go straight to the parliamentarian first and then go to IT? I, I think in practice for our staff, we would be discussing together. And I believe just if I'm recalling correctly, the discussion and joint rules, it was just a conversation back and forth between parliamentary staff and the legislative IT team to make sure okay. they're doing so process-wise, this is easily done and we're not creating extra steps for you or your staff. I think we'd be fine. I think our staff would be okay. fine. We're good. I'm sorry to let the Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it would work in practice for our process for parliamentary staff requesting the ledge IT to trim and then ledge IT just um, consulting with the parliamentarian. Yes. Yes. And then in a revised language, parliamentarian would consult with this committee and then confirm authority to yes. trim. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, points of clarification? Representative Donahue. Just, just clarification on the, the Zoom closed captioning. As, as we referenced, that's going to be an ongoing piece. And, and I just yeah. mental footnote that um, I, I think we when we sort that out, we may want to look to something that, uh, that uh, creates a process that allows um, uh, not editing, since it can't be editing, but footnoting of blatantly erroneous transcription. Like when I say I committed a robbery last week and I, according to the transcript, um, you know, the, the, we'll, we'll need yeah, we're, we're still going to need to work all that out. So adopting this um, um, by that understanding doesn't mean we're locked into it because we can right. and change it down the line. Right, yeah. absolutely. This yeah. is evolving. And we It'll do have at the yep. top pending any further long-term. Yep. Right, so. yep. All good. Great. Any other questions? Great. 
May I have a motion to adopt the House 22 policy for chamber live streaming, recording, and archiving? So moved. Thank you, Representative LeClaire. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, I'm gonna call the roll. Just a, that's yes. as amended. As amended. Yes. Yeah, sorry, this doesn't have the updated timestamp on it, but yes, to be clear, the amended version. All right. Representative Long. Yes. Representative McCarthy. Yes. Representative Bartholomew. Yes. Representative McCoy. Yes. Representative LeClaire. Yes. Representative Donahue. Yes. And I am a yes. The motion carries seven zero zero. All right, thank you for all your help and feedback on that. That is great. We have been working uh, without a policy this time, this entire time. So it's good to have a policy in place moving forward for this session. The next on the agenda, we have um, the follow up to the joint rules meeting today about how we start the 2022 legislative session. Um, there were some recommendations given and our house clerk has put those recommendations into a draft to get us started for this conversation. So what I would like to do is to have um, our clerk uh, share screen and walk through this draft and then we'll open it up to discussion. Sure thing. Thank you. One moment, please, while I pull up share screen. Again, okay. So to recap the discussion in the joint rules committee, there was discussion um, of a that committee recommended that the chambers operate remotely until Tuesday, January 18th, in light of the current conditions of the COVID-19 pandemic. What this draft has a first draft to get you started. Um, would do, it would be to allow um, remote operation of the House and its committees until that date. Right now, it is set up as having uh, one whereas clause and two resolved clauses, but I can edit it as you see fit. Um, I have the sponsor as a TBD, and the language would begin as follows saying that whereas the ongoing COVID 19 pandemic, and in particular, the highly transmissible Omicron variant currently poses a risk to the health and safety of House members, legislative staff, and members of the public if the House of Representatives and its committees operate in person. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House that the House of Representatives and its committees shall operate remotely until Tuesday, January 18th, 2022, and be it further resolved that the House and its committees shall continue to live stream their remote proceedings in order to maintain public access to the legislative process. I have this. Thank you. All right. I am opening up for discussion and feedback. Yeah, I'm curious, it's posted somewhere we can go. I am just, uh, thank you. I'm just emailing it now um, to, and I'll have it to Rebecca in a moment. Thank you, so that it can be posted, thanks. All right, Representative Bartholomew. Just, I think I know the answer, so I probably shouldn't ask, but um, just to be clear, uh, we have to come back in person on the designated date to pass this resolution. That's correct. That's correct. But if we discover that we can't return in person on January 18th, we could, make that resolution remotely. We wouldn't have to come back on the 18th to pass that. Is that correct assumption? Yeah, we are going to be working with joint rules to ensure we have a plan so that there is clear direction and on how we're, we're coming back on the 18th, which we would be having those conversations remotely. Um, but then we would come back on the 18th to have that vote if we needed to have a subsequent so if we can't come back after the 18th to in person, we would have to come back to vote 
this resolution? Is that that's my question? Not if you did it the Friday before, right? right. Exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm well, that's right. Assumption. Yeah. I'm just yeah. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I think. Yeah. That's the end. Did you have any follow? Okay. Thank you, Representative. All right. All right. I'm looking down at the end of the table slowly. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I was just going to. Go ahead. Did you? Sure. Yeah, I. Um, a couple of things. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the need to do this, to wait two weeks because of this. I sat in on Senate rules, so I heard about the freight train about to hit and um, these huge risks. And I just want to point out that, I mean, this, this is pretty speculative at this point. Um, I listened to the press conference this morning, and one of the things Dr. Levine said is actually the CDC has corrected its data, and the, um, the spread of Omicron in the Northeast is represents 11%, not 30% of current new cases. I mean, so it's even, it's that fluid. It's substantially less. Um, we don't know yet what's gonna happen to Vermont given its different environment, different um, vaccine levels and so forth. Um, we talked, there was talk last, uh, the last rules meeting about the fact that we really needed to look at it, assuming we were back in person, we needed to look for a, a trigger that would indicate, okay, here's, here's where we safety dictates that we shouldn't be coming in. Um, and unfortunately, we don't, we don't have that today. Um, but, you know, that's the kind of thing that's when we talk about being science-based, yeah. um, that's the kind of thing that prevents us from acting on gut I think right now we're acting on the gut that there is a risk. And given the lack of trigger, um, I support the concept that we need to do that um, for a two week period. But I don't think we should be identifying and saying things that really don't have um, evidence other than anticipations or potentials. Um, and I also think that, um, as was discussed at the Joint Rules Committee, we need to develop that trigger. Um, as uh, Representative Bartholomew was saying, well, how are we gonna make that decision that in fact, maybe it's not safe to come back? Um, I don't wanna see that being a gut again. Um, I think, and so I think it's really important to identify that in the resolution that we are gonna to look to hear testimony as a rules committee and uh, predicate uh, that potential of a delay in returns, not just on a new gut that, well, actually we haven't hit a crisis yet, but it must be still coming or, or whatever else that we really do it on, on the evidence. In the last two weeks in Vermont, I mean, Dr. Levine pointed out cases sounds scary, but cases are not what actually represent um, anything we can go to the bank with because cases don't tell us how severe they are. Cases only indicate how many people showed up for testing. What matters is hospitalizations. What matters is ICU level. We have gone down by 25% in the last two weeks in our hospitalization rates and by 30% in our ICU rates. I mean, we anticipate that might turn around again. And so I think we have to do wise decision making. But the reality right now is that, is that things are looking better. That's great. It's fluid, it's unknown. I support the remote uh, decision, but I would really like to suggest some changes and a specific addition um, about um, that future planning mm -hmm. and identifying um, a, a specific way that we would uh, potentially recommend um, a delay in returning so that we're not at the last minute um, going on, going on a, a gut. So I did start working on some notes um, in the whereas, um, 
I would suggest saying, uh, whereas the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and in particular the, and I would add, anticipated impact of the highly transmissible Omicron variant um, and that it potentially, as opposed to currently, poses a risk to health and safety of et cetera. Um, and therefore, and it's, if, if its committees operate in person in the first weeks of January. So we know that potential is there if we meet in the first weeks of January. And that's why we're saying we're gonna operate remotely until the 18th. Um, the second part would be to add another result. And I was still playing with wording. This is not the right wording. It's just the concept. Resolve that any potential, any future potential delays in returning to in-person uh, proceedings will be predicated upon developing a science-based trigger to identify inability to return safely uh, adopted by house rules. Um, something along those lines that indicate, and, you know, there's been discussions around, um, you know, hospitalization rates. If we see a, a change that indicates um, percentages going back up, um, or in fact, legislative, um, if we're if we're back in session and all of a sudden legislative rates are showing up, that that um, that would be a cause for alarm. That would be a trigger that would say um, we should be going back to remote. But I I think we should articulate in this that that is the intent um, for future decision making. That it not just be on our our perceptions. Um, I was surprised in trying to look back at some of the joint rules proceedings. <laughs> as much as we talk about science-based, there wasn't much testimony from medical folks or epidemiologists or any of these folks about um, what are the actual um, projections or risks uh, of meeting in person. And I know I don't need to repeat this because I know everyone agrees. It really is fundamental to our process to be here in person. There is, there is so much that we lose in every aspect of um, the quality of our work. So I guess that's it for now. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I, I, I thought that was pretty clear around the trigger language. <laughs> uh, Representative McCarthy and then Representative Colbert. Uh, thanks, Madam Speaker. So. Uh, I, I really appreciate Representative Donahue's uh, suggested changes to the whereas language. Uh, I think that is a little more accurate, actually. I'm a bit concerned about us moving forward and presenting a resolution that commits to a specific science-based trigger, not because I don't think we could potentially come up with one, but I think we've already said, both you know, in joint rules and here, that we are going to take more testimony, that we are going to consider public health and safety in terms of all the latest science that's available. But then on top of that, as the speaker said earlier, I can't remember <laughs> in, in which context, uh, but we have to look at the space that we're in and the unique things about us being here. And we, have, we are going to have to make decisions regardless of what trigger we choose um, if we, take a specific, you know, whether it's ICU beds or whatever data point we choose, we're going to have to look at that through the context of whatever is happening at the point we're making the decision. So it doesn't seem to offer a lot of clarity to our colleagues and to the public to me to resolve that we're going to work on a trigger any more than it is for us to just say right now, we would like to have more consensus around what triggers our next decision point. But I just don't know that we're providing a lot of clarity to anybody by saying, oh yeah, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we resolve to develop a trigger <laughs> because I think whatever trigger we come up with, we're gonna have a really hard time not saying, okay, yes, there's that number. And then there's the context of whatever new information we get. I mean, like I was a biochemistry major. I believe in science, uh, uh, you know, and the scientific process. Part of that is that the information that you get is constantly changing in an environment like this. There's, there's not a whole lot we're totally sure about. Uh, Representative Colburn. Uh, 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. And um, just want to say again to the Rules Committee, I really appreciate the opportunity to be, be part of your discussion on this. Um, and, and two things I wanted to say. One is I really want to echo um, Representative Bartholomew's kind of uh, questions about uh, just getting to real clarity about whether this resolution requires us to come back on the 18th if we're in a situation where we think we need to extend the time period where it's advisable to work remotely and just trying to really add as much protection as possible so that we're not in that situation or we're not in a situation where, yeah, I, I just think, so, you know, maybe that's as simple as roles committee, like putting a new resolution to the whole body before the 18th, if it, you all feel that we need to extend this time, but that, um, you know, that's not a, a, like a huge quick turnaround, especially for the kind of testimony that you're talking about. So I think that's just one open question that I have about this resolution is whether it gives us enough leeway to extend the period if that um, becomes advisable. And then the other thing I would say, I think I'd like to echo Representative McCarthy's points about just the challenges of finding you know, this one perfect scientific trigger. I mean, I certainly appreciate um, Representative Donahue's desire to make this not just informed on just some kind of feeling that we all have. Um, and I think it is really advisable for the Rules Committee and other committees to be taking testimony about the safety of, of meeting in the unique way that the legislature meets. But you know, just thinking about like the idea of um, using hospital hospitalizations as a trigger, you know, I'm home with my third day of cold symptoms after having multiple kids being close contacts, waiting for my PCR test results, and I'm very happy to have the opportunity to participate remotely with you today, but wouldn't have felt comfortable coming in person. So I think it's not the 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 whatever trigger points here about case numbers versus hospitalizations, it's also just about what kind of equitable process we can create in the legislature for our ability to represent our constituents. Um, you know, and so there's, there might be a lot of different data points there, like maybe this new variant is milder, but, um, if there's a certain amount of quarantining involved for those of us who have school-aged kids, um, we're, you know, if, if, and there's an in-person requirement um, to participate and to vote, that's gonna be really, really challenging. And um, the hospitalization rates might be really low, but it, there still might be some real barriers to having a full and equitably functioning legislature in that, that requires in-person participation. Yeah, something specific. Yeah, yeah just, go ahead. Yeah, just to, quick, um, in terms of the 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 trigger, um, which you know, I I assume developing something that does take our setting in uh, into account, and uh, I I think this is potentially more a discussion about. Uh, wording, which I said I, I'm not comfortable with my own wording, than the concept, perhaps. Um, but um, I, I think, um, Representative Colburn, your comments, I think you were possibly mixing towards the end in particular a little bit more, mixing up um, the how would we make a decision to return in person versus the process if we did when you were referencing things like equity, because I think we will need a future discussion on, given the, the ongoing pandemic, um, if we are in person, um, are we going to have any special uh, recognition or accommodation about um, issues of, of voting um, if a person has tested positive or you know, that, that kind of thing? So I, 
I think that may be a little bit of a separate question that is something we are going to have to be dealing with um, uh, when we come back in person. Uh, Representative Murphy. Thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak because I'm not an appointed member of the committee, but I just want to speak for the five of us that don't have leadership and share that um, it was from everyone that raised their hand and spoke to me, there is a huge desire to be in that building. So I really appreciate uh, what Representative Donahue has, has put on the table and do feel that the two week delay is a hard stop that we're looking at delaying two weeks. It's not, and then we'll decide whether we come back. It's that we are coming back at, in two weeks rather than on January 4th. And potentially there could be a world crisis that causes us not to do that. But the goal, the, the intent, not just goal, but the intent is we are back. And I, I just would put that on the table and, and appreciate that you all are looking to that. I'm just looking around. What I'm wondering is if we start with Representative Donahue's first um, uh, ideas or amendments in the first whereas clause. Um, so Representative Donahue, uh, you have in the first line anticipated impact, is that right? Uh, the, the anticipated impact of the highly transmissible Dan, did you get that? Okay. And then there's a second one. Yeah, the second one was uh, replacing currently with potentially. Uh -huh. Okay. And then the third one was if uh, if the House and its committees operate in person in the first weeks of January, or if in the first two weeks of January, if we want to be specific to what the resolution is doing. So. Okay. So we have an amendment on the table with these three instances. Do you have any feedback, thoughts? Representative Barthani. Um, I'd like to speak in defense of the first clause as it's written. I see nothing inaccurate. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the proposed changes except for the second one where potentially poses, this is saying the current pandemic and the Omicron, it, they definitely, it's not potentially, it definitely poses a risk. And this says nothing about the morbidity or mortality or the, the severity of infection. It just says it poses a risk. It does, we know it does. So why say potentially? Can I respond? Yeah. Um, it says, it says, um, currently poses a risk if we return in person. We had made the decision to return in person. And in terms of current data, the only thing that's changed is that there have been fewer hospitalizations, fewer ICU. So I don't see how we can say it currently poses a risk. We think it's going to, um, and, I, and I, I'm, totally in agreement with the fact that there may be, you know, a, a good uh, chance that it potentially does pose a risk, but current facts have not changed from when we decided it did not present enough of a risk to uh, come in person. The only reason we're changing is because what, of what we think is going to happen, not because of what's currently occurring. That's, that was why I felt it should be potentially. And it's not that there isn't a current rate of risk, but in terms of the current risk, if we return, it has not changed from when we made a decision that it was acceptable in terms of safety to return. I would just say it still posed a risk. We were a calculated risk and we were going to accept so we could return. But every time we go out of the house, go to the grocery store, there's a pandemic out there and it currently poses a risk wherever we're including here. So to say potentially, it just makes it inaccurate to me. Just that piece, the other two pieces you suggested seem fine to me. What if we just leave it at poses a risk? 
<laughs> compromise there. Okay. That, 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 currently that, and potentially. I can live with that. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Solid collaboration. Okay. Is everyone agree with that change? Yes, I'm seeing head nods. Okay. All right. Any other um, feedback or points on the other two instances of amendment? Right. I'm seeing none. Do you need anything further from us on this one? Uh, no, I think. Uh, would you like me to read it back? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, or do, would you like me to share screen? Sure. That would be great. Thank you. Thanks. One moment, please. Thank you. So I've added offer if, if you're moving toward offering this, I've added the committee on rules as the sponsor um, pending final approval. This new revised whereas clause would say, whereas the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and in particular the anticipated impact of the highly transmissible Omicron variant poses a risk to the health and safety of House members, legislative staff, and members of the public if the House of Representatives and its committees operate in person in the first two weeks of January 2022. Any flags there? Are we good to move on? All right, I'm seeing thumbs up here. I'm good? Okay, great, thank you. All right, so let's move the discussion to whether there is certain language around the decision of how we talk about a trigger or not trigger or- And some new language. New la okay, go ahead, Representative Donahue. I'm trying to play with it while listening. So. Um, Instead of instead of using trigger, which can be really hard on yes. its own to say, what yes. do you mean by a trigger? Um, so resolved any future potential delays in returning to in person will be predicated upon the rules committee presenting facts based upon testimony of I didn't write the words medical and scientific whatever demonstrating an inability to meet safely. So trying to make it that whole context of bringing in, uh, you know, science-based information that would demonstrate that we could not meet safely um, as a, uh, an assumed component or a required component of considering delay. Again, I'm trying to get away from, right, trying to get away from, um, what people feel or think and, and pull it into an actual assessment of the um, medical and scientific facts. All right, so let's talk about it. Representative Long and then McCarthy. So my concern is around limitations to what may be, which is already an unknown of what uh, we're, we're potentially facing. Um, so I'll just throw out an idea that just popped into my head. What if the governor declared a state of emergency? Are you saying that, that we would automatically then? Well, we, we have to vote ourselves, right? To act on that. And so I'm just saying this would limit us to, to health and science based or whatever. I, I, yeah, yeah. That's the first thing that popped into my head. No, no, I, I, I think that's a, I could probably think of other things too, but that one popped into my head. And I'm just saying I, my, my, my first statement, right. Is what I'm following up on. And that is limiting ourselves to something very valid and something that I absolutely know we are doing this for. But what I'm worried about is the unknown that we aren't anticipating right now and um, not wanting to limit it to that. But that, what if it was an, an or? Either we do this or that there's a, the, the, I mean, one of the problems with state emergency is um, it, can, it can be declared for a very limited basis. I yeah, so don't get hung up on the state emergency thing. I was throwing that out as an example. Yeah, just, yeah, no, but I think it's good. I mean, I think it's a good uh, brainstorming. I, th I think it's, I mean, it's, it's getting at my concern. You know that that you know that there isn't anything um, concrete. Um, 
You know, I don't feel this decision is well based. I really don't. And but I'm willing to go along with it as long as we have something in place that the next decision, if if we postpone coming back, is well based. So I haven't had the time to really try to work on um, on articulating it very well. But that's what I'm trying to get at. That's. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's keep working and see so, what we can. Uh, Representative McCarthy and then Representative McCoy. Yeah, I think we're we're all committed to making sure that when we have to come back together to make the next set of decisions that we're going to use the best evidence that we have and that we'll continue to you know, consult public health officials and experts. But I, I also was concerned, um, similarly to Representative Long, what happens if we adopted the that proposed language from Representative Donahue, and then you know we have twenty or thirty legislators that tested positive and, and they're home, and we're making our decision based on our internal, you know, if we've said the way we're going to decide whether we're coming back or not is entirely about the advice we get from public health officials about the safety. It might be safety for one hundred and twenty people in the house to return. Turn and then maybe we would all have to in person, and then we'd be denying those thirty people the ability to participate. I just but, well, this has changed to presenting facts to the body. I, I'm, the rules committee is not making the decision the way I was re-suggesting it, so it's not you know. Yeah, I just I don't know. I don't know why. I still am not convinced that there's a, a additional value that we're providing by having this further resolve. Like today, what we're saying is that we're coming back on the 18th barring some other thing, right? And that's really all we're trying to do here. Well, today we're saying we're not coming back on the 4th. And I don't think we're doing it on the basis of, of any, any good or solid basis. And so if, if we're leaving it in the same condition, um, then I don't know that we're coming back on the 18th. Because we could make the same uh, not well-informed decision. Representative McCoy? Yeah, so I think that's, that's the concern that today we're acting on a anticipated impact of the Omicron virus to the body. We're anticipating that it's coming. So I think what Representative Donahue is trying to say Come January 18th, we don't want to anticipate again. We want to have some type of a science-based thing that says, this is what we're going to look at, not some kind of anticipatory, well, we think it's going to come again. I mean, I, I acquiesced, as I've said to the speaker, that I will do it this time. But I think our concern is that we're going to continue to anticipate something instead of basing our resolutions on fact or some type of a, you know, we're going to look at ICU numbers or we're going to look at hospitalizations or we're going to look at, you know, members of the House and Senate to see where they are as far as our, how many have contracted COVID or not. Something that we're not always anticipating something, but base it on some type of knowledge, fact-based. And I don't know how to word that either. And I know that we've all made you know, a collective agreement to come up with that. Mm -hmm. But I think what we're looking for is, yeah, we've made a collective agreement, but it's not in any resolution anywhere. It's not in like, you know, I, I think that's, there and where lies the problem for. And I don't know what the solution is. Right, right. No, I'm I don't just... think anybody knows what the solution is. <laughs> <laughs> we're all we up, we're we're working to together. Get to, to, you know, you know, but I, I think I would be very uncomfortable to come back to the table and say, yeah, you know, we, we anticipated it didn't come. So we're going to anticipate again come January 18th. I, that, that is just not, I, I'm totally not comfortable with that. So would it be, again, let's, we're all brainstorming, throwing ideas yeah. on the table here. Um, 
what if there was a letter or a memo that I sent out to all members that would be outlining our conversation at joint rules and house rules, talking about how we're gonna come up with this process and lay out the kind of experts we're gonna bring in, talk about how you know, we're reading things about hospitalization and ICUs, but also need to take into consideration what's happening with our own membership and put some and kind of lay that out in a step by step process so that all members have the understanding since not everybody's here with us <laughs> or aren't able to join us to follow along to kind of tell the story of how we got here, who we've heard from, and then the next steps with joint rules and house rules that lay out who we're like, who are the type of people we're bringing in? When are we going to meet and just have it laid out step by step? Resolve, see addendum attached. <laughs> <laughs> I would just represent. I would be comfortable with that because that actually lays out in language really what the what we were discussing in joint rules. Frankly, we, I mean, I don't think there was ever any anticipation of us just saying we may or may not come back. I think we said we were going to reassess, and the reassessment was looking at all of those things you just described. Mm -hmm. I would be fine with that. And it's putting it in writing. Hmm? And, it, and it's put it as actually articulating it in writing without from it in here. Well, I Madam Speaker, I have seen the kind of memos you put out and the kind of detail and thought in how you have articulated um, steps and um, processes to members of the body. And um, and given that, I think I could take a lot of confidence in feeling that that would be um, a very explicit commitment to um, the kind of informed decision that would happen if we were to need to consider um, a change in the commitment currently to returning January 18th. Okay. Okay. I'm just looking around the table to see if there's consensus around that. Representative LeClaire. Thank you, Matt. Um, I, I also agree. I guess my question would be is if, if there's any clarity required after the fact, what would be considered the governing document here? Is it the resolution or is it the follow up letter that you'd sent out, will be sending out? to address some of the questions, but if there is an area that isn't either clear or addressed. So I guess I don't know. So uh, this resolution will be up for debate on the floor on January 4. Yes. So um, I guess the we can additionally reiterate on this. I don't know if you're going to have this memo available ahead of time oh, so that on yeah. January 4th yeah, it's I, available. Yes. So that I think, I think would, to ease that would tension, make, that we would, make would absolutely get that out like okay. in the right. next 48 hours. So I think <laughs> that would make a big difference for people yeah. to actually see that yeah. in writing and say, okay, we'll vote on this. And knowing mm. that there is this memo that they have been able to digest and read prior to voting on January 4th. Mm -hmm. I think that would allay some fear. Yep. Okay. Be prepared to get a draft requesting feedback. Okay. All right. Are there any other um, potential amendments that anyone else would like to put on the table? Okay. It's the end. How much time do you need to update the draft? I think I had to write the letter. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> want me to just share screen again? Because I have. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Please. Okay. 
Thank you. We are here on what's labeled draft 2.1 and it only contains the changes that you requested to the first whereas clause that we already discussed. No changes to those and no changes to the original two result clause. Great. Any questions? I just want to make sure everybody's seen this, so I'm just going to give it another moment. Thought you sit with it. And oh, no, sorry, you, you all see it here on your screen. Okay. I haven't found it yet. So. Here we go. I got it. I, I, okay. I got it too. I know, I, the new email hadn't arrived. It just did, I think. <laughs> yeah. Take a moment. There we go. Uh, Does everyone have it? No. Okay. Uh, not the new one. Okay. No, I don't have the new one. No, I haven't sent. I can email it to you. Yeah. Oh, oh, it, I can look here. I, I didn't sorry, realize. I thought it had been emailed. I, just, no, 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 that's fine. I was just doing it on the fly here. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. Right. See, folks look like they're scrolling or reading it. Does anyone have any questions, points of clarification? All right. So I just have one kind of. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So will um, joint rules work on this and then it they make the recommend to both House and Senate rules, or will we as House rules be dealing with that? That's right. Us as House okay. rules. Yes. Okay. This is the next step Pretty on sure. the decision okay. making train. All right. <laughs> the 18th. Okay. Prior to the 18th. Your, your, your question related to what happens after the 18th. No, well, my no, question no, was. Yeah, for, yeah. On the eight, would we be working on the memo that you know we're we're looking for trigger? I'm going to use the word trigger, but we're looking. We'll find another. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll be but, working but on. The speaker articulates. The, we the speaker work, articulates. We will be the ones working on correct. that in the interim. House okay. rules, well, yeah. So we will work in conjunction with joint rules as well to make sure that we're all coordinating. But the the, the entity that makes that decision for the house is House rules. Great. Like everyone has read it. And I have a motion to adopt draft. Well, are we going to offer it by the House Rules Committee? Or? Oh, that's that, a good that question. Was, I that made that, that, made that assumption draft. that was in the draft. Is that, that, that the last draft? Our members. The last draft. The one she put up that says. Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at TBD. I'm like, right. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> And I did yes. just email it to members just so you have it handy, but I can put it back on the screen. No, that's fine. I Are believe you. Okay. Yeah. okay. Is everyone good. good to go with that decision? I'm seeing heads nodding. Any objections? Okay. May I please have a motion to adopt draft 2.1? So moved. Second. Representative McCoy. Further discussion? Right. Are members ready to vote? Okay. Representative Long? Yes. Representative McCarthy? Yes. Representative Bartholomew? Yes. Representative McCoy? Yes. Representative LeClaire? Yes. Representative Donahue? Yes. May I explain my vote? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> a moment. And oh, it's oh, I already did. <laughs> and Karwinski votes yes. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. We just did 
a lot of work <laughs> and a short period of time. time. Yeah. And we are on time, which I also appreciate. So um, members, I really appreciate your work. Um, I will begin to work on that draft and we'll be following up with you all to get your thoughts and feedback to make sure it's clear as possible and detailed as possible. Um, the goal will be able to get that out in the next couple of days so that folks have enough time with it. And we will, um, I will also, in addition, send out an update to all members um, with the, what happened today, um, with links to what happened and just some reminders for the upcoming session. So if there are uh, any particular reminders that you want me to put in there, let me know, um, since I know you are all talking with your members a lot. And uh, with that, are there any um, requests for further agenda items or any concluding thoughts before we wrap? Representative Colburn. Um, I just continue to think, and I think it's going to be complicated, so I would just urge this committee to dig into the question of remote voting um, for when and if we are have returned to it in person. And um, yes, to Representative Donahue's earlier point, some of my earlier comments about sort of how to conduct business equitably certainly um, got into that territory, but just in the absence of any policy on that, I think there, you're gonna continue to hear concerns, at least from me on behalf of my caucus about, about this question. And it seems like a tricky one to figure out. So I, I just encourage you all to dig into figuring out that policy sooner rather than later. Any other? Thoughts or future agenda items? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll adjourn and stay tuned for the next steps. Thanks, everyone.